Let's now talk about eigenvalue and singular value decomposition, which are very important tools they will see in the deep learning lecture, the self-driving car lecture, and also the computer vision lecture. It's true that many mathematical objects can be better understood by breaking them into parts. For example, integers can be decomposed into prime numbers from which we can directly see by which certain integers can be divided by. Now here in this case, we're interested in decomposing matrices. An eigen decomposition decomposes a matrix into so-called eigenvectors and eigenvalues. An eigenvector of a square matrix A is a non-zero vector such that multiplication by A only alters its scale and the scale is known as the corresponding eigenvalue. So here's an example. We have matrix A, that is the matrix we want to decompose. And um, if there is a vector V, that if we multiply that with matrix A, we get a, a scaled version of vector V. Then this vector V we call an eigenvector and the corresponding eigenvalue that we need for scaling V such that this equation is true we call the eigenvalue. That's what we mean by only altering the scale. We don't change the direction of the vector, we only change the norm of the vector. As any scaled version of vector v is an eigenvector, in order to make the eigen decomposition unique, we typically only consider unit eigenvectors. We require that these vectors here are normalized such that they have Euclidean norm 1. We now concatenate all eigenvectors to form a matrix V. So this is a matrix V where all of the eigenvectors are in its column. And similarly we form all eigenvalues into a diagonal matrix lambda where we put all of these eigenvalues and there's always one eigenvalue that corresponds to an eigenvector. So lambda 1 corresponds to V1 lambda 2 corresponds to v2 and so on. So we form this diagonal matrix that the corresponding eigenvalues corresponding to these eigenvectors are in the diagonal and the rest is zero because it's a diagonal matrix. As a little remark, to remove further ambiguity, by convention we typically sort the eigenvalues in descending order, which means that if, if lambda 1 is not the largest eigenvalue, then we swap that with another lambda which is large as such until we, we achieve this descending order and of course we need to swap the columns of V in the same way such that they correspond. The eigen decomposition of A is then given by the following expression A equals V times lambda this diagonal matrix times V to the power of minus 1 V inverse. And it's guaranteed that every real square matrix has such an eigen decomposition. Furthermore, every real and symmetric matrix A, which is also a very common case, can be decomposed into a simpler expression, Q lambda Q transpose. So we don't have a minus one here, no inverse, we have just a transpose. Because Q in this case is an orthonormal matrix composed of the eigenvectors of A. Right? It's again a matrix with the columns being the eigenvectors, but in this case it's all of the columns are orthonormal to each other, which means that we can replace the inverse with the transpose. Let's look at an example what this transformation that we discovered does to a set of vectors or a set of elements in space. So what I've drawn here are the in, in black the first eigenvector and the second eigenvector, v1 and v2. And I've also drawn a circle which denotes a set of points as well as two specific other vectors that have no specific meaning just to see how they're getting transformed. And if we now apply matrix A to the circle and these vectors, we get this circle and these um, pink and orange vectors here. But in this case here we do it by decomposing this transformation into three sub-transformations where first we rotate, we have a Q 
uh, t that we multiply with the, if we multiply a vector here on the right hand side, then we multiply this first with qt. And because q is an autonormal matrix, we know that this is it's just a rotation matrix in 2D space, for example. So we rotate this um, entire coordinate system here, such that it is aligned like this with the axis. And then we apply the diagonal matrix, which means we scale along the individual axis by the eigenvalues. So now you can see we have a stretched ellipsoid here in the horizontal dimension and we have a little bit of shrink ellipsoid in the vertical dimension because in this case we have assumed that lambda 1 is larger than 1 and lambda 2 is smaller than 1. And similarly these example vectors, the orange and the purple one, get transformed as well. And then finally we apply Q, so we rotate back. We don't apply QT, now we apply Q, so we rotate back into the original coordinate system. And what we can see now, what it does, what this transformation does effectively through these three sub-transformations is that we have wrote, we have basically um, distorted this unit circle here, this isotropic unit circle, by scaling the space into the direction of v1 and v2 by lambda1 and lambda2 respectively. So in this direction of v1, we have stretched the space and also corresponding example vectors and in the other direction we have um, shrink the space because lambda 1 is bigger than 1 and lambda 0 in this example here is smaller than 1. Okay so here are some properties. A matrix is called singular if any of its eigenvalues is 0. If any of its eigenvalues is 0 we have a matrix where there is some dependencies between columns. And so it's not invertible, it's singular. The rank of a matrix equals the number of non-zero eigenvalues. That's a convenient property. If we have the eigenvalue decomposition, we know um, how many of these eigenvalues are zero or close to zero. So we know if it's possible to invert that matrix or not. And it's we know how many solutions the corresponding linear system has. Only matrices with full rank can be inverted, right? Only if we have, that's what we said before, if we have all of the columns to be independent, only a non-singular matrix, we can invert it. A matrix whose eigenvalues are all positive is called positive definite. And a matrix whose eigenvalues are all positive or zero is called positive semi-definite. For positive semi-definite matrices, we have that for all x, if we um, construct this product here, this must be bigger or equal to zero. Positive definite matrices additional guarantee that if this product is zero, then also the vector must be zero. Now it's of course possible to derive and calculate the eigenvalue decomposition with pen and paper, but luckily in practice we don't need to do that because there's great numerical linear al algebra packages that we can use. And for example, in Python, we have NumPy, where we can use NumPy linalg.ic to simply, with one call, decompose the matrix A into its eigenvectors and eigenvalues. If you want to know a little bit more about this decomposition and how to do it by hand, I can recommend this link here. Now, finally, there's also something called a singular value decomposition. Now, why do we have a yet, yet another decomposition? The problem with the eigenvalue decomposition is that it can only be applied to square matrices. For non-square matrices, however, we can use the singular value decomposition. The singular value decomposition looks similar to the eigenvalue decomposition, but it can factorize a non-square matrix, a matrix out of the matrices, the m times n matrices of real numbers, for example. And you can see that here on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, we have different matrices now, but we also have a D diagonal matrix in the center. So in this case, we have U element of the space of M by M matrices, D this diagonal matrix um, element of the space of M times N matrices and V element of the space of N times N matrices. 
U and V are orthogonal matrices and D is a diagonal. It could be a square diagonal or a non-square diagonal matrix. Of course, the interesting case here is the non-square diagonal matrix case because then we can apply this to non-square matrices. The elements along the diagonal of D are known as singular values and the columns of U and V are the so-called left and right singular vectors respectively. And indeed, the eigenvalue decomposition and singular value decomposition are quite related. If we consider the singular value decomposition of arbitrary real matrix A, and if we take A transpose A, then we, using the rules of transpose that we've seen earlier, we can write this as such. And then of course, the because U is an autonormal matrix, um, this term goes away here. So we have D squared, V, D squared, V transpose. So we can see that the right singular vectors V um, are the eigenvectors of A transpose A. The right singular vectors of V, according to the singular value decomposition of A, are the eigenvectors of A transpose A. And similarly, the left singular vectors U are the eigenvectors of A, A transpose. And the eigenvalues of A transpose A and A, A transpose are equal to the square singular values of A. We have the D square here. So it's basically just the square operation sitting between the eigenvalue decomposition and the singular value decomposition. Now let's finally look at an application. And this application is something we'll look into more detail in lecture 11 of the deep learning course. It's called the Principal Component Analysis, PCA. PCA is a technique for analyzing large high dimensional data sets, as we'll see. So we can project any high dimensional data set into a smaller dimensional space where we can look at it. And we do this by um, projecting it such that most of the information is retained. So we want to project it such that we keep the directions of largest variance. And now the nice property here is that if we compute the eigenvectors of the scatter matrix or the covariance matrix, these eigenvectors are called the principal components and they face the direction of the largest variance. This is something you can show and we'll also look at later. So here in this example, we have the blue data set and we compute the eigenvectors and we can see that the largest variance is in this direction here because this is spread like that. And then the next large variance auto auto orthogonal direction to this vector here is this vector here, which is the second eigenvector. And so if we want to project this two dimensional data set into a one dimensional data set, the best we can do is if we project it along this line, because this is how the variance is spread maximally. For this illustration here, the two eigenvectors v1 and v2 are scaled by the square root of the eigenvalue. So this indicates the spread or the, the, the standard deviation in each of these directions. 